It was the morning of September 20th, 2006. Jeff Markin recalls heading for work as usual. What he doesn't remember is driving himself to the hospital. He had called his boss and told him he didn't feel well. His boss was concerned and convinced Jeff to go to the emergency room. Somehow Jeff made it. As he got there, he collapsed. Dr. Chauncey Crandall was doing rounds in the intensive care unit that morning. An alert call came over the PA system uh, that someone had arrived at the hospital with a massive deadly heart attack. And then a second call uh, went out over the PA system and specifically asked for me because I was the cardiologist on that day. When I arrived there, it was like a war zone. It was like being in battle. It was chaos. Everyone there fighting to keep this man alive. The ER staff worked on Jeff for 40 minutes. They shocked him a dozen times. Despite their efforts, there was no response. Once Dr. Crandall decided the team had done everything possible, he called the time of death. While a nurse prepared Jeff's body for the morgue, Dr. Crandall updated the charts. Well, as soon as my note was completed, I walked out through the door to this emergency room. I heard this voice say, turn around and pray for that man. And I wanted to ignore that voice because I said to myself, how can I pray for that man? He's dead, he's gone. There's no life in him. So I kept walking and the voice came back again. And the voice said, turn around and pray for that man. And I stopped and I thought to myself, I need to honor the Lord. So I turned around at the doorway and I walked to the side of the body and the nurse was on the other side of the body and she's looking at me like, what are you doing? Why are you here? And I stood there next to that corpse and I opened my mouth and these words came out. Father God, I cry out for this man's soul. If he does not know you, as his Lord and Savior, Father, raise him from the dead now in Jesus' name. I remember staring at bright lights and they were swirling around. Out of those uh, bright lights uh, came an image and he told me that he was there to look over me and make sure that everything was going to be fine. And the other doctor walked in the room and I pointed to him, I said, shock this man one more time and he looked at me he said dr crandall we can't shock him he's dead there's no life in him he's gone and i said for me shock him one more time and that doctor out of respect and honor for me went over to that body with those defibrillator paddles and put his paddles on that patient and shocked him shocked jeff and immediately an instant heartbeat came back. Instant, perfect, regular, which we'd never seen before. And the nurse screamed, what have you done? And this perfect heartbeat came back. And then suddenly, this abdomen started moving and started breathing. And then a couple moments later, the fingers started twitching. They immediately moved Jeff to the intensive care unit. Three days later, Jeff woke up with no evidence of brain or organ damage. Once I, I woke up, my daughter Jillian was there and that's when she told me what had happened. When I came in Monday morning, Jeff was sitting up in bed and I said, where, where were you that day that I prayed for you? in the emergency room and he said dr crandall i was in total darkness and i was so disappointed and i said jeff what were you disappointed about he said i was alone for eternity he asked me at that time if i was willing to accept god my life and into my heart i just opened my arms and accepted god uh, it was just a very emotional time. I, you know, I remember you know, crying <laughs> in his arms. Today, Jeff is back at work and gets regular checkups with Dr. Crandall. 
he still has no heart problems or residual complications from his brush with death. To know what I had gone through and uh, to be so fortunate, and uh, that's been part of, I guess, my uh, daily battle is why me? Why have I been <clears throat> so fortunate uh, to have God shine on me? Uh, I guess a second time. This day that I prayed for Jeff was a day of very little faith. It wasn't one of my big God days. And when I walked into that emergency room, to tell you the truth, I didn't want to stay and pray because I was so much in a rush with my work. But I prayed. And I didn't have a lot of faith backing that prayer up that day. But the Lord asked me to do it, so I honored the Lord and prayed. And that's all we need, just a spark of faith like that mustard seed. Miracles are real, and they're real today.